Welcome to Parkbench Tutors. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, visit us at parkbenchtutors.com or look us up on Facebook. We're going to continue our look at documents for accounting and we're going to look at documents for internal and external communication. Now, if you're working in an accounts department, what are you really interested in? In other words, what type of documents are important internally and what types of document would be important externally? Let's consider the internal ones first. Well, we can think of memos between departments, costing, financial records, sales figures, and budgets and projections. All of those can be documentation which is passed internally. Remember, we are talking about passing information and externally we have returns to be made to various authorities we have annual reports and of course we also have advertising so let's have a look at some of the things we might be supplying internally customer activity suppose someone wants to know what customers are buying from the business well we can then create customer activity summary reports which tells us exactly what each customer has in fact bought what about the opposite? What are we buying and who are we buying it from? Well, that we can get from a supplier activity report. Remember, with computerized accounting software, this of course becomes a fairly easy thing to do. It's much harder if you're trying to maintain daybooks because you'd have to analyze daybooks separately. Are we making a profit? Well, owners frequently ask that. To do that, you would construct a profit and loss account. So again, you would be providing information internally. And what about the owner who's worried how is the business looking today? Are we healthy? What are our assets? In other words, what do we own? What do we owe? Well, for that we produce another document called a balance sheet. Can we provide information in other forms? Yes, we can provide it in charts and graphs, and salespeople are often interested in that, and others are interested in on what do we actually spend our money on. Well, we can present it in this sort of form, if you like, this is a chart which makes use of area and relates the area to the amount spent in particular uh, regions. Okay, memos that are sent internally, what should they be like? If the memos are going to be useful, then we need to think about how we set them up. Well, they should be brief, otherwise it wouldn't be a memo. They should show the date, who it's from, who it's to. We should make sure our content is clear. That means the, if it contains a request or is it just information or is it an instruction if it's a request or an instruction is a response required and if so by when now here's something that you've probably seen various versions of but it's just a reminder that it's important with internal and external communications to make sure you read through and have good spelling and grammar and that spell checking on your computer may not be the only thing that you need. In formal communication remember too that that is important in business and familiar terms are not appreciated. Your manager won't be too pleased if he finds you communicating in this sort of fashion. Okay, what about external reports then? So who's interested in the business? And what type of information do they actually want? Well, here's an annual report. So who is a user of this report? You can probably think of several users. I'm just going to mention two. Shareholders and investors are interested in that type of report. And what can you expect to find in an annual report? Well, remember, a lot of it is basically just advertising the company to shareholders and potential investors. So we have sales figures here and overall profit ones. But if you look, we, you will also see something else on this uh, slide. How, are they, how is the information presented? Well, we can see figures, we can see charts, and of course we can see writing. So information could be communicated and presented in different ways. Reports should also contain financial statements. In other words, what you see on the left here isn't really sufficient. And financial statements should consist of a balance sheet, income statement and changes in financial position. 
there's a need for accuracy when you produce those financial statements and companies are not allowed to misrepresent their position. Other external agencies who require information are of course Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Most of that is now asked for online so you need to be familiar with dealing with online communication. And the same thing applies for VAT. Most of that is now collected by online information. And of course for payments of taxes collected from employees and national insurance payments. Financial statements, in other words the balance sheets that we mentioned, profit and loss account or the income statement, they also have to be submitted elsewhere and that's the company's house. Businesses then also need to understand financial information not only to external agencies but also from external agencies. If you are in accounting and you are dealing with grants or subsidies then it's important that you understand the finances behind those and that's particularly important in agriculture which is of course one of the major uh, uptakers of farm subsidies and you can see from this for example just how much it does uh, mean to various businesses Tate and Lyle for example received 827 million euros for their subsidy that ends our session brought to you by Parkbench Tutors narrated by David Hopcroft thank you for watching and listening we wish you success in your studies for more information look us up at parkbenchtutors.com or visit us on Facebook